Good morning. Christians are not assembly line productions, with every unit being exactly like every other unit. Consequently, no Christian can replace another in God's plan. He has his own individualized plan for each of us and has individually gifted us accordingly. We are not interchangeable parts in Christ's body. I'd like to welcome everybody out to church today. Um, also welcome everyone who's worshiping with us online. Uh, do we have any first time visitors with us today? Um, if you could take, uh, in your pews you'll find a, uh, a little red clipboard that's our attendance registration. If you could please just fill that out and pass it down the pew uh, towards the aisle and we'll collect those later. Um, at this time, if you could fill out any prayer request cards uh, that are in the pews, and those will be collected at the offering. Uh, do we have any announcements? I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who worked on the Holly Fair and came yesterday and all that were involved. It was a wonderful fair. If you weren't here, we still have a few things downstairs that you can purchase. And I don't like giving special thanks, but I have to give special thanks to Lori Bell, who has worked herself and, and, and the whole Bell family, I mean, they're the ones who pulled everything together, and I think, and there's so, everybody here had one part in it, it's just wonderful. And Mr. Bell told me that we're thinking once everything is, and if we sell more today, it's gonna be like $4,600 that we made on the fair. So thank you, thank you. Good morning. Nice to, see you, nice to see Bud here this morning, too. We haven't seen him in a while. Um, so this evening, at, at 5 o'clock, we're hosting our church family Thanksgiving dinner. And this goes back 25 years, at least. Um, our friend Carol Clare uh, was away from family and said to uh, Jill, we should have a church uh, Thanksgiving dinner to celebrate you know, our connected church family, especially for those of us who don't have family nearby. So we plan to do that. Unfortunately, Carol passed in the intervening time, but we had that first uh, dinner that year and have continued it every year since. So the turkey is ready to put in the oven downstairs. There's one cooking at our house. Um, please come and bring your favorite uh, accompanying dish for Thanksgiving, whether that's a side dish or a dessert. Uh, it's amazing how it all works out. Sometimes we think, uh-oh, we're gonna end up with uh, nine green bean casseroles and no pie, but that never happens. Uh, so we'll hope, we'll hope to see you tonight at five o'clock. Also, the, uh, the Congregational Church, the Catholic Church, the Episcopal Church, and us. Yeah, I <laughs> almost forgot us. <laughs> uh, are gathering together uh, tonight at 7 at the Congregational Church for an ecumenical Thanksgiving service. The choirs from all four churches are combining to sing some really beautiful music. Uh, so it'll be a, definitely a service filled with music and uh, light on the other elements. So uh, if that attracts you, good. If it doesn't, well, you know ahead of time. And uh, so we like to see you at both places, but uh, especially dinner. And uh, 
just a, a side note for that, the offering that we'll be taking um, tonight uh, will be for the Shoreline Soup Kitchen and Pantries. As we know, this it continues to be a great need here in Clinton. And if you ordered a Advent book and devotional, they're here in the office uh, to pick up before our study, which starts next Tuesday. If you didn't sign up for one, but you want to participate, it's not too late, just let us know. And also, sign, if you can sign up to bring soup or sandwich, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Sharon. Tammy's birthday is tomorrow. Tammy's birthday is tomorrow. Dennis. Diane's birthday was yesterday. <laughs> Anniversary is tomorrow. Anniversary, not birthday, right? Anniversary, okay. Wow, wow. <laughs> Maestro? At this time, we will pass the peace, and we're still doing it by waving or, or shaking the hands of everybody who's around you. Um, please rise and pass the peace. Big expansion. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit different this morning. We're going to, not the intro, it's they call it the worship. Uh, so we're going to start uh, with Dennis, and the choir will sing. We do the intro, and then we all sing. So be ready on hymn number 87, in addition to what's printed in your bulletin. So that's page 87 in your hymnal.
Come to the house of the Lord. Come with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. We bring the gift of prayer to this house. We raise to God our hopes and our fears, our wounds and our triumphs. We bring the gift of our presence, being together in worship and fellowship, work and witness. We bring the gift of our tokens, given freely from our hearts, to be used in the service to God. We bring the gift of service, commitment of our time and talents to serve God by working in God's world. Please join together in singing, Come Ye Thankful People Come, page 694 in your hymnal.
Please join me with the uh, prayer of confession that's printed in your bulletin. God of all grace, all that we are, all that we have, and all that we will become is a gift from you. Forgive us when we forget this and assume that time and talent are made by us. Forgive us when we pridefully count our earnings rather than delighting in your gifts. Remind us of the high calling to be the stewards of your abundance, caretakers of all that you have entrusted to us. Make us faithful with little and also with much, that we may give ourselves as you did, wholly and completely, even unto the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And you can find it on page 193 in your New Testament in the pews. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing.
the children to come forward? Yeah. yeah. Martha, pastor? Oh, it's so good to see you. Good morning, children of God. Good morning, all children of God. Uh, so we're so happy to be here together. And yeah, so we have lots going on today, right? Yes. What, what, are, we, um, what are we doing later? Oh, yes, you see this. Yes. Here, you want to take that? Okay, good. So, we'll talk about that in a minute. First, we're going to talk about our talents. Does anybody have a talent or something they do well? How? What do you do well? Oh, you snap your fingers. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. I did not put that down on my, on my cards. I can whistle. You can whistle. Okay. Can you do anything else with your mouth? Um, talk. Sing. Grandpa, can whistle really, 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 really loud. Oh, wow. Okay. What else? Lucy, what can you do? What are you good at? Talking. Talking? Okay. Michael, what are you good at? Here, maybe I need to show the cards I have. Anybody good at sports? I am. I'm the best at Okay, so you can have that. Anybody good at playing an instrument? I'm good at it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody good at reading or math? Or dancing? I'm good at oh, I'm Raina good at says she's good at dancing. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, I can't wait to see that. So how about, are you good reading, math? Are you good at art? Great. Okay, everybody's good at something. Yeah, we're all good at different things. God has given us all sorts of talents to do. And whatever talent God has given to you, you need to use it. A yes. Pie. A pie. So a pie. We need to sing. We need to smile. We need to dance. We need to read. Whatever we've been given, we need to use. Oh, boy, have we missed you. So can somebody tell me what you did in Sunday school? Yeah, what was that big? We decorated a turkey. You decorated a turkey. And why? What did it say? Like, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. So we're thinking about Thanksgiving, right? Bye. Careful. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Don't want you to fall. Perfect. So we have lots of feathers, all different colors. Did you help cut these out with Mrs. Egan? Yes, and we have markers, and we have glue sticks. Are these just for the kids? No. No, it's for all the children of God, everyone. So downstairs, when you go for fellowship time or when you come for the supper tonight, take a feather, write what you're thankful for, 
and then put it on. And let's see how much we are thankful for. Oh, okay. I think he's working on his uh, comedy act. Can we say a prayer together? Jack, can you fold your hands? Remember we say prayer? Okay, ready, Graham? Dear God, thank you for all the gifts you have given to us. Help us to use them to show others how wonderful you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, children of God. It looks like Mrs. Whitney is back there for Children's Church. And I invite everyone else to stand in body and or spirit to sing hymn number 131, We Gather Together. Our gospel for today is from the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew, verses 14 to 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. At once, the one who had received the five talents went off and traded them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents traded and made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. 
I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with five talents. For to all who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer, outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you great thanks for this Sunday where we come together to remember all the blessings you have given to us, and we pledge in turn what we will give back to you in the following year. Continue to touch our hearts and open us up so that your message is heard, is received, and is followed. Amen. Amen. I wonder if finding a buried talent is as fun as finding buried treasure. In our Monday Bible study, we've been studying the book of Isaiah, and Deb has given it the title, Warnings and Promises. I think this text, this parable we just heard, would fit into that context. It's a warning and it's a promise. It's a reminder for us that we need to use our talents to demonstrate our faithfulness to God. So I want you to think about your talents. Are you using them or are they buried? I heard this story about when a discussion in a small group turned to evangelism, one person gave a big sigh of relief and said, well, that's just not my gift. With that statement, he buried his God-given talent to share Christ's love with the world. I would venture to say that sharing God's love, sharing the good news, is a talent we all have, but we have it in different ways. How many of us have buried the gifts God has offered to each one of us in search of that special gift, in search of what we think we should be doing as opposed to what we have been given? Theologian Myron Osberger calls this parable one of responsibility and risk. I think that goes along with the warnings and promises. We need to take some risks for Jesus when we offer ourselves to him and allow him to use us. So if you have buried your talent, now is the time to unearth it. Or if you haven't used it in a while, now is the time to dust it off. Or 
maybe you have a new talent that has been bubbling up within you. It's time to take that and run with it. Now, a talent in Jesus' time was a large sum of money, equal to the wages of a day laborer for 15 years. So I didn't do the math, but imagine that's a lot if he gave five talents, which was worth such a great amount of money. And he entrusted it with his servants. Interestingly enough, as a result of the wide telling of this story, the word talent came into the English language in the Middle Ages as a term for God-given abilities, our gifts and graces. So today I'm thinking about both of those talents, both the monetary ones that we give, as well as the gifts that we have been given to do and to share. It goes without saying, and yet I'm going to say it, our gifts, our abilities and talents are given by God. And they're given to be used. Talents may look simple or complex, visible or behind the scenes. They take a variety of forms, include being worship leader, playing the ukulele, making pies, making jams and salsas, teaching, singing, healing, offering hospitality, plumbing, carpentering, car carpent building? I guess that's an easier one to say. And those are just a few. And they have been given to us, not for us to show off and say, look what I can do, but rather to be used in a spirit of humility and love in order to further God's kingdom. And yes, we've been given gifts for our personal lives as well. And those are to be used for the same purpose. When we use our talents instead of burying them, we may do some with some trepidation because it's a bit of a risk to get out there and use it. And there's responsibility. There's a level of carefulness that we need to take when we're sharing what God has given to us. No wonder that last servant was nervous. He had 15 years worth of labor monetarily shown in his hands. What to do with that? Now, this all sounds very serious, too. And it's not that way, though. There also needs to be joy that comes with knowing you've discovered something within yourself that God has given to you, and you can use that to further God's kingdom. Now, I've never liked this parable ending, the gnashing of teeth and the throwing into outer darkness. There's a couple of them here in Matthew 25 where we hear about that. And when you think about it, it's pretty crazy because it's not like that servant did anything heinous. He just buried his gift. He buried that money so that he could give it back. Well, the fact is, he did not use the gift that was given to him. I've never liked the idea of God punishing people. But when you think about it, unfaithfulness results in a lack of joy, a lack of opportunities for kingdom building. I think the warning here is that when we don't use our talents, we are separating ourselves from God and from one another. And when we do that, we end up going into a darker and darker hole. 
So it's not God sending us there. It's us separating ourselves and sending ourselves there. I was wondering what Matthew's audience might have thought about this, given how much a talent was. Certainly, they would have been surprised at the generosity at first. And I'm sure they could identify with the idea of burying the treasure, the talent, keeping it safe. It's kind of like hiding our money in the mattress. But then, as Jesus often does, he turns things upside down. So they were surprised to hear that the one who buried it was the one who was condemned. We are all called to use what we are given. But Jesus' point was that talents were given to be used, not to employ an opportunity to hide it or to lose it. Talents are not museum pieces, and they're not opportunities for us to puff ourselves out. We also miss the point of the story if we fail to see that Christ requires his followers the hazard of uncertainty. They didn't know when he was going to come back. They didn't know what would happen when they shared their money with the bankers. So when you venture out, when you use your gifts, when you give wholeheartedly of yourself, you are blessed. Those promises do come true. So back to what our talents are for a moment. Sometimes we feel like we can't do what someone else can do. There were certainly a lot of things I saw yesterday here at the fair that I could never do. But remember, that's the point. We're all given different gifts. And we must not be envious of what someone else has, nor should we try to damper someone else's gifts. Encourage one another. Help to unearth that buried talent. Give generously of your monetary talents and your inward talents. And may God multiply all that we have been given for the advancement of God's kingdom to share his love, his peace, and his forgiveness here on earth. Amen. So we are receiving our pledges today. If you brought it, I invite you to put it in the offering plate, or you can um, share it, uh, I mean, send it to the offer um, office, and Sharon has some. If you didn't get one, or you need one, or you've decided after hearing the beautiful choir, you want to up it, go for it. Uh, and, one, and also, we have our offering envelopes that are available for you to take home. One of the things I love about our, um, the box you get with the offering envelopes in it is that we have our special Sundays that we give. We have six special Sundays as a part of um, being United Methodist that we share. And so as I was taking mine out for, for, to put my pledge in today, I realized that next week is the United Methodist um, Student Sunday. And so think about that. We'll send more information um, during, during the week regarding that. But again, just another way that we can share with God as we share with one another all that we have been given. So let us now receive our morning offering.
Let us pray. There are no limits to the gifts you have given us, gracious Lord. Now we return thanks to you for these gifts that we bring these tokens to you, asking for your blessing on givers and gifts. Help these gifts and givers to be your witnesses throughout the world. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue now as we share in the litany of dedication for our stewardship pledges, as printed in your bulletin. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks this day as we gather the pledges of support for your church in the coming year. We bring them before you with eager anticipation and hope. For those whose lives have been touched by your spirit, who have increased their commitment. We give you thanks and praise. For those who are responding to your creative grace by pledging for the first time. We give you thanks and praise. For those who are tithing and even exceeding a tithe. We give you thanks and praise. For those whose lives are in transition or turmoil, and feel they cannot pledge, but who continue to be a vital part of our community. We give you thanks and praise, and we pray for calm in their lives. For those who are giving their time and talents in service to the church, we give you thanks and praise. That each one of us and your whole church become more faithful to the call of service in Jesus Christ. That these pledges may emerge as real gifts, thereby enabling the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ to move forward through this congregation and out into the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves to this act. Amen. Amen. Let us now share our joys and our...
wise and patient God. We often know or at least think we know what you want us to do, but yet are often afraid to step out in faith. You have given us multiple blessings and opportunities to share our gifts and to help them. So sometimes we are afraid, oh God. Sometimes we also have a feeling that we are not as worthy as others. Oh God, give us the strength. Give us the empowerment, and the boldness to step out and use those gifts. Oh God, help us, too, to celebrate one another's gifts, to invite others to come in and share on the journey. For when we work together, things are so much better. Oh God, one of the greatest gifts you've given to us is the gift of prayer. And so we lift up to you all the joys and concerns that are upon our hearts. We think about this time of thanksgiving, and we ask you to touch those who are feeling sad this year for an empty place at the table. Oh God, we lift up to you those who are estranged from family, those who are afraid to say those words, I'm sorry. Oh God, for those who have food insecurity and aren't sure if they're able to share a nice feast, help us to help them. Oh God, with all the challenges and the places in the world that are rife with war and terror, let us be your peacemakers. Let us be your harbingers of love and grace and mercy. Challenge us to use the gifts you have given to us so that we may honor the giver We ask all this in Jesus' name as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand in body and or spirit as we sing the insert, Give Thanks.
Go in peace. Love and care for one another in Christ's name. And may God bless you with every gift needed for God's work. May the Spirit grant you the willingness to risk yourself completely for the sake of the gospel. And may the love and compassion and the hope and the faith of Jesus dwell richly within you till the time of his coming, both now and forevermore. Amen.